with all the uh, with all the blessings of my uh, teachers and my seniors and uh, i think uh, i am not able to see any juniors behind uh, below me uh, so if they come in also with all my, all my love i am there i am there devashish bhai naik oh lakshmi yes yes so uh, yes yes lakshmi is there yes yes so thank you all for joining this session and uh, special thank to devas smith sir for arranging and pushing me hard to be present in this uh, t top so let me try my uh, slides here Is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. It is okay. visible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, actually, this uh, this presentation comes with a talk, and when I put the uh, issue in the group that I am about to do a discussion, Kauru, to meet in different aspects, super, different subjects, super. so why not the burning topic of climate change and when agriculture is so hardly affected by the climate change issues and also agriculture is contributing a lot to the climate change uh, parameters or indicators so why not to talk on a or discuss take a discussion on this aspect also so that uh, comes to me uh, eventually so i have tried to uh, accumulate some informations and also some interventions which can be possible and uh, should be possible to mitigate the climate change impacts in the coming future <laughs> let us uh, at the end of this slide i also put some points for the debate uh, which is there in the slot for the 8 to 8:30 so uh, very beginning in the very beginning let me uh, just to replace how odisha is vulnerable to climate hazards and how what is the Uh, situation of odisha coast particularly though in the tribals drought is a uh, bigger issue but uh, the devastations or the uh, tune of damage and uh, uh, destruction to livelihoods is much more in the cyclone prone area cyclone and flood prone areas so if you go back uh, with the uh, database database uh, what is available from the wisdom uh, from in the last 130 years we have experienced around 100 numbers of severe cyclones cyclones and super cyclones so around one cyclone for 1 and 1.3 years so this is very huge in terms of a poor uh, state like odisha uh, and also the uh, very very meager diversity in the livelihood also the diversity nahi je to am livelihood re so such devastations and such uh, climate uh, change impacts are very difficult uh, for the coastal communities particularly and also for the tribal communities where drought is most much more Uh, uh prominent so though uh, we have only 17% of the indian coast so uh, my presentation is mostly uh, uh, focusing on the coastal uh, uh, in, um, landscapes as i have been associated from the last two years with the coastal uh, landscape projects so if you go to the uh, database also uh, since 19, uh, 1737 when the data is available with us and till the uh, 2000 uh, 2012 so we can see the frequency of the cyclones means the mean, uh, severe cyclones or super cyclones or most uh, severe cyclones how that has been reduced to one years uh, one to 1.5 years in an average from the last 10 years so these are the uh, scenarios flooding droughts landslides other things uh then now uh, when uh, this climate change impact is we are discussing on the climate change impact so this is this is the result so what is the uh, cause cause and effect if we see that the greenhouse gas is a most troubling uh, reality of now it is uh, though many are naturally available gases but some are still completely humanly made gases i think uh, our technocrats or uh, uh, many seniors who have been discussing in the groups also on this aspects sometimes so we will have uh, another round of discussion today after the my presentation but the most uh, troubling gases are carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and water vapor so how this 
because it is related to our uh, natural presence also uh, there is also uh, these are also uh, exerting from the human activities so due to the burning of fossil fuels or deforestation or different activities or uh, of cattle farming uh, landfill waste dumps so different types of activities mostly uh, livelihood uh, related activities such gases are emitted to the atmosphere which are much more dangerous in terms of greenhouse gases and which ultimately uh, contributing to the global uh, warming and then ultimately contributing to the climate change so if you see uh, the analysis which sector or which subsector is contributing uh, how much of greenhouse gas emissions to the atmosphere so agriculture comes into a considerably highest level higher level that is 13.5% some have other, another database also but it is also a reliable data source uh, where uh, we see agriculture is contributing around 13.5% of world's total greenhouse gas emissions so uh, if we see how this greenhouse uh, Gas uh, current state. What is the current state of this greenhouse gas? So when we start analyzing the temperature rise, we fix from 1850, the pre-industrial stage, then to 2020, whichever is data is available. If we see, so now it is around 50 billion billion tons per year greenhouse gas emissions are being recorded in 2020. So uh, due to this uh, change in the climate uh, parameters and uh, different uh, uh, indicators, in the 1990, we have a IPCC, which is the global network uh, under the UN, uh, UN platform. So what is the uh, impact on the agriculture, which is the most uh, important and most critical? Because if we, uh, these are the uh, database taken from the reliable sources of FAO, IPCC. And it will see important part is the global food production will reduce by 30% by 2050. So which is, uh, at one side we are uh, rising in the population and another side we are uh, seeing a reduction or visualizing a reduction in the gross food production. So this will be a, a very difficult uh, scenario to manage in the future. And other things are also on the screen also. So but most prominent is or most vulnerable or most striking one is the 30% reduction of the food production by 2050. So what now, uh, what is the uh, our role uh, in mitigating these impacts of the climate change? So though many are in place, it is not that we are seeing very new things, but important part is its scale. How much scale and uh, if it is uh, and its mandate, how the government or the policy is mandated to uh, take these interventions or take these initiatives to, to deal the impact of the climate change. So conservation agriculture is also one of the most important aspect because if we want to reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emission from the agriculture uh, sector, then conservation agriculture is most important. So to show that uh, different practices uh, suggested many uh, will come from other uh, seniors and uh, researchers also. So zero tillage farming, which has been a old uh, practice and uh, it is very now uh, both specific area uh, it limited but it has to uh, uh, be scaled up. Then use of power crops, precision irrigations, uh, then improving soil health by different organic matters and reducing water usage. So these are some of the conservation aspects where agriculture, where agriculture engineers can play uh, most vital roles. Um, <clears throat> these are some of the uh, ideas which are with photographs. Then another uh, big interventions which government is also coming with, that is green energy solutions, where uh, mostly the agriculture engineers have a, a larger role along with other engineers also. So renewable energy sources like solar, wind power, and also in some areas, uh, tidal power is also being experimented and uh, biomass fuel is also being experimented. So definitely renewable energy will be the uh, call up for the future. And uh, many initiatives are taken in that direction also. NDCs in our national determined contributions of India also uh, focusing on reducing 40% of fossil fuel or uh, 
by the next 10 years. Then you uh, definitely water management, which I have already uh, shared. Uh, water management is also a, a, a typical uh, interventions which will reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. Also, it will reduce the cost to the farmers and cost uh, and the production cost of the um, different crops. So if you will see the overall, uh, we can put it into this way, uh, developing alternate fuels for the agriculture uh, of farmers and different interventions which will sequestration, uh, enhance the carbon sequestration and also the life, efficient livestock production. So because livestock is also a sector which is uh, reducing much more methane uh, in, uh, in comparison to other interventions. So we have to see how the efficient livestock production system can be established at the uh, uh, farmer's level. So this is the uh, uh, my conclusion slide, uh, and uh, definitely we have to act very fast and uh, along with our uh, different stakeholders, other engineering streams, and also the decision makers, policy makers, because uh, definitely there is a very widely say uh, as of now, uh, we are the first generation to experience the impacts of the climate change, and definitely we will be the last generation for to do something about the climate change. Otherwise, it will be too late. So then collaboration, definitely other uh, streams, other technology, uh, other technocrats has to be in collaborations. Sociologists are also to be in collaboration and different innovations is the uh, key. It has to be uh, bring, we have to bring the different innovations into the agriculture because many things we cannot change because uh, as in my, in my last slide also, I highlight because there is no substitute for the agriculture. Definitely the food production, has to be there, uh, but how innovative approaches, technologies can reduce the uh, greenhouse gas emissions and uh, that will contribute to lower down the global temperature, global warming. That will be the key in the future. So now the uh, compulsion or the debate with this uh, heat of uh, listeners or participants, because the, uh, there is no substitute for the end product in terms of agriculture. So uh, there is also there is possibility very very much possible that we can uh, shift from fossil fuel to electricity and that from generating the electricity from renewable renewable sources. But what is the substitute for the plant nutrients? Means it is organic or inorganic. But anyway, both are not very uh, very very uh, beneficial for the greenhouse gas emissions. If we see. Uh, like small scale, again, another part is the small scale farm size versus use of technology. So technology has also their limitations, whatever is available now, if you see a, a tractor, power tiller and other uh, implements also. So there is always a limitations with the farm size. So how the technology can be uh, very uh, comfortable for the different farm sizes, how it will be applicable. Then another one is the, uh, if you will see, organic nutrient versus inorganic nutrient. How, why I have put this? Because what I am coming through across a research document where organic uh, addition of organic nutrient is definitely uh, reducing the nitrogen or nitrous oxide emissions, but at the same time, it is enhancing the methane emission. So how we will balance the organic manures with uh, inorganic nutrients? When you add inorganic nutrients, there are some researches uh, which say that addition of inorganic nutrients or nitrogenous fertilizers reduces drastically the methane emissions, but at the same time, it will enhance the nitrous oxide emission. So then uh, flooding versus drying, uh, research also says uh, du during flooding, nitrous oxide emission is less, but methane emission is highest. So that is why we are practicing SRI. Uh, so uh, Prabhat sir is there also, he will come in definitely, I, I hope. So uh, alternate drying and flooding, that is the most vital interventions of climate resilient agriculture or paddy cultivation we are promoting now also in our project also. But it also have its limitations in uh, emissions. emissions. So how we uh, balance this, uh, this type of uh, um, uh, emissions? So what is the out? Uh, what is the other way out? So another one, the last point is my, the, what is the loss and damage? 
principle which is now uh, being taken by the IPCC also we have discussed in the uh, global forum. So if the farmers are being uh, uh, affected mostly by the climate change impacts, how they can be, their damage can be repla replaced or the, how they can be uh, repay back for it. So he, whether there is a loss and damage principles or policy has to be there. Uh, and also when we are taking up any new intervention with the farmers field. So we are not very sure about the success. success. So whether that loss and damage principle to be there uh, in formally uh, government policy by intervention planning then also many interventions or many innovations can be scaled out. So with this, I am uh, closing my the presentations from as of now, then open to the uh, discussion. Well, okay. Thank you very much, Devasis. Uh, it was interesting, but short. <laughs> uh, um, before we before I open it up for the discussion, I want to congratulate Kalpana Rai Guru. I didn't, don't want to take your limelight yes. away, but Kalpana Rai Guru received the, the best teacher award uh, from OUAT, and that was a matter of pride uh, and of pride for all of us. So, I want to acknowledge that, Kalpana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Yes. No. That's a great ac accomplishment. So. Um, no, no CATN has received that before, I think. Uh, so essentially, uh, you are the first one and the limelight. You have always been the limelight. Anyway, Devasis, it was a very interesting discussion. And now what I will request everybody is to, uh, you know, one by one, if you unmute or you want, you can put it in the chat uh, and I can read it uh, for, for Devasis or you can read it. It doesn't matter to me. We have ample time, uh, about 40 minutes. So... Floor is open. I know everybody has a question. So, ah, Devasis, Prabhat Samal. Hello. Ah, more about the question, Devasis. Ah, Prabhat. Ah, Prabhat, ekum. Look, our third key fourth slide re. तमें देखे ही जाजे forest रू 18% green gas रे रिलीज हो ची आओ agriculture रू 14% आओ this one this yeah. one अच्छा अड़ो forest रू क्यों ती एत्ते गोड़ा ये हो ची green gas रिलीज शेट तो carbon dioxide टा कोमी बो बुझ लगी नहीं बड़ा मिथेन जहा भारी बो मिथेन हाँ मिथेन organic matter रहिले मिथेन emission हो probably that will be the reason because yeah. I have not, uh, I am not available with the background of this whole uh, pie yeah. chart. Uh, yeah. But I hope so. Uh, what you are also highlighting? Because no, I, I, I am in doubt. Uh, Rudra is also there. Because I am to say that jungle ko bade hai pay. Aujhe the jungle ko ame bade hai green gas body bhotala labota kona hala. The amaro se jehetu jungle re potra guda ko suchi ke na tole padi bo. Ibang pani re uda hai jibo. Na thoru mithen bhari bo. किंतु कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड टक तो से अब्जर्व करियो ना जंगल टा बुझ पर लगी कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड भी आउ सेटी तो N2O बाहरी वाला चांस नहीं नाइट्रोजन ऑक्साइड सेटी बाहरी वाली नाइट्रोस ऑक्साइड और ना जंगल रे क्यों दी अधिक हला 17.4 मतलब सही टा टिका डाउट लगू चाहो किसने ओके थैंक यू अच्छा � Read it yourself. Uh, no, uh, I don't read Kordion because I am uh, on my screen. Okay. Uh, I am with the presentation because if any, anybody have any question on any okay, slides. Okay. So the question is the real effect of climate change we are facing. It's a question ki statement. Mujani. The real effect of climate change we are facing this year is uh, high intensity of rainfall. Yes, yes I am also. Not ready. only in hilly states of uh, HP, Uttarakhand, mm -hmm. but also in mm -hmm. coastal and interior states. I feel the role of agricultural engineer has opened up a uh, scope. This mm -hmm. apart from prediction in GCM. GCM um, means so, uh, GCM is global climate module that we are uh, trans translating down the prediction okay. that we are okay. model nine. Global climate uh, change model. Global climate model. Global climatic model, yes. Mm -hmm. 
এটা কোশ্চেন মহোদয় না ইট ইজ নট এ কোশ্চেন ইট ইজ এ ডিসকাস ইট ইজ ওপেন আপ ফর ডিসকাশন एक्चुअली ओके रियली দি व्हाट व्हाट मिस्टर पाती हैज टोल्ड it is a very uh, nominal uh, point definitely there is a contribution by the agriculture changes but now it has become very uh, difficult situation for entire country so to say the real situation that we are seeing every day in the um, uh, the newspaper news daily news you can see the uh, havoc actually lot of soil loss lot of erosion landslide loss of life loss of agriculture land everything going going up because the hilly areas even our korapur uh, uh, phulwani those are also having a chance of landslide even kalahandi hills are also having agriculture in the slope uh, that is also going to affect that we should think up in that way some research uh, that is up to now for discussion uh uh but as many many senior and uh, uh, who have experience in this field is also there so i i will come to my last slide and to have my uh, some inputs from you uh, whoever is present here so uh, prabhat what what prabhat bhai is also touched, touched upon because how to balance the uh, whether we will go for organic uh, cultivations or inorganic cultivations because both have different uh, contributions to the greenhouse gas emission so uh, whether that is correct that research is correct or yes that is not very much substantiated by the research findings then is is there any scope for the research uh, whether we can play a role in that because when we are saying the farmers that you will go uh, to the uh, ship to the organic cultivations also we are contributing to the same methane emissions so how to go about that and uh, is there anything way out out of that Uh, was that a question or uh, yes or... yes uh, that is my question to the to the other uh, uh, scientist or technocrats so so my my answer is that there is nothing organic about it okay everything mm -hmm. is boiled down to inorganic uh, components okay whether you call it organic nutrient or inorganic nutrient uh, you know that's the starting point but everything boils down to its basic elements so it becomes actually uh, inorganic right mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, essentially uh, the only uh, so what what has been done actually in india uh, you know uh, in in uh, western part of india they have they have experimented with uh, both organic and inorganic uh, or inorganic is a direct applicability of the inorganic materials because uh, organic needs time time to break down so inorganic revolution started because of that they want you know to enhance the enhance the uh, production productivity. Yes. productivity of the crops right uh, the problem with that is the breaking down period was missing and and the breaking down period actually helps uh, the the soil health okay uh, when the soil is engaged in some breaking down process then it helps so bijay babu you are you had a comment or bijay bijay babu no 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 question no thank you oh, okay 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 so i have a comment i have a comment i just want to tell you ha ha sir kon kon prakutare organic au inorganic di ta ko ekar sangare tumko accept kariya ko padibo to ame khali organic kimba khali inorganic kole asubidha re padibo karan ame inorganic ki ame accept kole because of green revolution green revolution re ame jo type ro anile sab seeds दरकार इनअर्गानिक फर्टिलइर एवं पेस्टिसाइड आमें अधिक प्रडक्शन यू आर टू आक्सेप्ट इनअर्गानिक फर्टिलइर एंड अल्सो इनअर्गानिक पेस्टिसाइड अर्गानिक यू कैनट आचिव दैट आमर जी वंदना शिवा फिजिस्ट आज वेल आज एनवरमेटालीस्ट सी श्रीलंका गवर्नमेंट को आडभाइज कले तुम टोटाली अर्गानिक कर इनअर्गानिक बंद बंद कर दि टोटाली श्रीलंका गवर्नमेंट से सर्टेज थी फरेन करे टोटाली बंद करदे अर्गानिक कले वर्ष जमी अर्गानिक कले प्रडक्शन रिड्यूस कर ड्रास्टिकली रईस प्रडक्शन वन थार्ड रिड्यूस करते वन थार्ड रिड्यूस करदे विदिन सेवेन मन्थ दे चेज देयर पलिसी एगेन दे आक्सेप्टेड इनअर्गानिक 
एनो ऑर्गेनिक जो होची सेटा खाली बेटा प्रचार होची किंतु ऑर्गेनिक रे यू कैन नॉट गेट दैट क्वांटिटी ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड दैट क्वांटिटी ऑफ प्रोड्यू प्रोडक्टिविटी आल्सो सर आई एग्री सर आई प्रोबेबली आई एग्री विथ यू द ओनली ओनली प्रॉब्लम इज द सोइल हेल्थ सो ओवर ओवर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम द हेल्थ ऑफ द सोइल एक्चुअली सोइल बिकम्स अनहेल्दी विथ विथ इनऑर्गेनिक direct application of inorganic nutrients because inorganic inorganic nutrients are principle hochi it it gets dissolved in water immediately uh, so soil doesn't have a chance to uh, gener- you know generate that uh, or get uh, break that uh, nutrient okay uh, and and basically with organic nutrient that is the advantage now i have a hard time buying that there is a difference between organic nutrient and inorganic nutrient although you are providing uh, sri lankan evidence but uh, it could be other factors that uh, that contributed to uh, the loss of uh, um, productivity in in rice uh, uh, i am not sure i have to read that paper but debasis you were saying something i was i no, I, I was saying something debu uh, biswajit here oh biswajit okay uh, uh, so uh, and i think this answers uh, part of your question also uh what i have read actually i am not very sure on this that uh when one convert changes from inorganic to organic uh, farming uh, natural farming let's call it that way uh the the uh, the soil condition and the crop itself takes time to adjust to that right okay so and and because uh, you know inorganic is being uh, is a very intensive way, way of uh, applying uh, fertilizers or applying nutrients the the crop itself takes time of 2 3 years to adjust to the change that is happening that is why the drop happens in the production it's not because the i mean the nutrients are less in uh, natural farming or the application is wrong or something that uh, that and on the on the question about dabasis uh, was asking on uh, you know methane gas emission from organic uh, fertilizers Uh, I have a solution. I don't know whether it will be uh, if the apply. I mean, uh, how how easily it can be applied? Is that if we can? I mean, th- what happens is the nutrient, the methane gas emission happens when the organic uh, manure or the organic fertilizer is being prepared. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. if we can capture that methane, for example, like it is done in gobar gas. Mm-hmm. Okay. and then that methane itself can be used as a, as a source of energy mm. and the nutrients uh, are still preserved and the uh, you know the natural farming can be done with the uh, the the slurry of the gobar that, that is done so that could be an answer but i am not uh, i am mean, i have not uh, done any so, research on this yes. mm. uh, and for for uh, because i am in the dairy sector i am aware of this Uh, in up this are this has this experiment has started on a very large scale in uh, mm. banaras area actually uh, the entire dairy of about 6 lakh liters is being operated on gobar gas uh, methane uh, energy and the slurry is being uh, distributed back to the farmers as fertilizer so maybe that is an answer to this um, i am not i am not sure uh, is, 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 i i see i see rudra also in this uh, group uh maybe rudra will have some input on this yes yeah, sure, sure. sure 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 uh, no no wait 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 rudra alpana okay. is saying okay okay yes, alpana what ha uh, sir mo mo actually agree ko ji jaha um bisojit sir kahile this is um it is like that methane has to be captured first and then the for, uh, what bio fertilizer we are uh, having these two uses can be different one of our student snigdha many of you might be knowing her she is actually uh, is a very young uh, entrepreneur from our field from agricultural engineering she is working on bio fertilizer so in some connection i i know bit of her work uh, like prabhat sir uh, what he said that one that organic and inorganic can combine kariya padibo probably what the finding she herself has found out in the odisha soil that um, the same fertilizer may not be suitable for all kinds of crop and as uh, bisojit sir said 
the pro the results are very slow we have to see and the research is still in the transition phase so for crop specific fertilizers have to be there and the soil health the bhai apan kahile jora soil health according to soil health also the biofertilizer type has to be selected not that randomly any biofertilizer to all the crops tale e bhaya result asibo jemti sri lanka re astila व्हाट माय परसेप्शन इज जहाँ टिके डिस्कशन कर जानी मत लगुच दि रिसर्च दि मान ह्यूज रिसर्च इज रिक्वायर्ड लोकेशन स्पेसिफिक एंड क्रॉप स्पेसिफिक इट इज कंटिन्यूइंग बट दि प्रोग्रेस इज वेरी स्लो आई थिंक वी विल पिकअप देन दि थिंग्स विल बी ऑल स्टैंडर्डाइज दैट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर एरिया फॉर दिस क्रॉप दिज आर द रिक्वायरमेंट देन मे बी दि सल्यूशन विल कम मे बी नाउ रुद्र कैन आर्ड समथिंग Okay uh, thank you so thank you so much dev bhai let me also join to congratulate the basis uh, for his wonderful presentation thank you i think we were discussing about the chemical fertilizer versus organic mm -hmm. uh, i think we need to see uh, uh, a picture in totality if you see the fao and un ccd literatures yes um, i think you can find some alarming statistics with regard to land degradation and land, land desertification mm -hmm. um, and in that context we uh, we see actually two type of uh, land degradation or soil degradation one is the chemical degradation that is because of extensive or intensive agriculture this uses of the agrochemicals you know the pesticides and also the physical degradation of the soil like the loss of the soil structure or the fertility etc to to maintain the soil physical uh, quality of the soil or the physical condition of the soil the biological or uh, the organic fertilizer is a must because the chemical fertilizers cannot improve the physical condition of the soil mm -hmm. and the chemical yeah. degradation of the soil that also takes place because of the you know if you recall i was posting one time the dirty 12 the dirty dozen which is listed in the persistent organic pollution the pops convention of the un you know mm -hmm. all these dirty pesticides if you see the developed countries have systematically phased out all these 12 dirty pesticides whereas in india they are still in use you know like dialdin aldrin ddt uh, hexachlorobenzene and all these 12 you know the dirty uh, pesticides so we need to see actually in a totality we cannot actually discuss in a what you say uh, in a isolated in a fragmented way you know the just this the crop productivity but in the long run you see the soils are degrading gradually because of intensive agriculture because to meet the 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 agricultural demand or the food demand uh, the soil and the land is constantly being degraded so in that context i think there should be a balance uh, i think uh, the countries should progressively you know phase out the dirty chemicals so the chemical fertilizers and increasingly uh, they should use the organic fertilizers yes or yes. green manures etc you yes. remember also in the circular economy lecture we were discussing about the regenerative aspect of the circular economy i think this biological fertilizers or the organic fertilizers have the capacity to help us regenerate or restore the soil ecosystem which is extremely essential to sustain the crop productivity uh in that context um, um, uh, 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 i do not know uh, actually what the condition in india exactly uh, the extent of use of the organics i know the pockets of excellence are there like predominantly you can see there are composting activities there are green manure etc but still a uh, substantial amount of chemical fertilizers or agrochemicals are being used which have lot of impact also in the soil and water ecosystem and also the public health you see uh, because of these pesticides there are tremendous uh, health impacts we, in 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 burgad i think i think there is a there is an increasing uh, rate of uh, cancer incidences because of use of pesticides please correct right. me if the story is correct or not no 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 you're so right so those right. and those those things needs to be actually phased out in a systematic manner so this is what i would like to add to the discussion but i have a question to debasis you yes. know to what extent resilience has been part of 
the government policy planning and development in the agriculture sector. Uh, you are mentioning about the increasing frequency and magnitude of natural disasters, uh, the, the climate impacts and etc. But we do not see actually the policies and programs of the government of Orissa or in the government of uh, India as necessarily integrated resilience is part of the agriculture policy because you are today discussing about the agriculture sector but you can you can actually discuss resilience in many other sector so could you tell me because you are working closely with the government of odisha do you really believe the policies and programs have taken into account resilience uh, no actually uh... I am also uh, very much skeptical on this because though I am a part of the government from the last couple of years, but uh, yes, there is a policy document because Odisha being the first in every many cases since the last uh, 2020, 20 or 15 years, because Odisha is the first to develop its state action plan for climate change, the CPCC. Uh, so, but yes, there is a, there is a uh, plan in every department. You see, this uh, activ the activities which are commonly uh, done at the farmer's level or uh, means promotion of dhanicha, promotion of green manures, promotion of organic manures, the activities are limiting to those interventions. Means the climate change or climate resilient activities are limiting to those. And most of the focuses are on the disaster rescue. So there, uh, the government focus is much more than the uh, long term. Uh, resilience building. Uh, yes, in terms of infrastructure development, they have been there have been a sea change in the Odisha. Cyclone centers are done. Many housing uh, projects are being taken up in coastal Odisha, also in coastal cities. Rural households are given uh, to the communities. Uh, but in terms of agriculture sector, uh, you have had you will see very less interventions in terms of resilience building. Or in term very, you see, uh, in coastal Odisha, there is a uh, very uh, varied difference in the uh, landscape to landscape. Means in the Puri also, you can see different soil structures, different rainfall patterns. We have been experiencing this for you. The Krishna Prasad or the Chilika landscape, around 70% less rainfall experience price. But there is no movement from the government side. What to do with the farmers? Because farmers This is a very live example from our side also. Jo farmers to around 70% farmers for paddy uh, seedlings would have they have uh, they cannot able to transplant in the main field. So they left paddy cultivation this period. Out time be nahi So in this context, the, there is no uh, opportunity to uh, build up block level uh, agricultural plants. There is a district level agriculture plant, but uh, but agriculture sector, I am not seeing any climate uh, prospective uh, in real terms. Sanjay, is it a follow-up question or, uh, or is it uh, a different question? Sir, I want to supplement something what uh, okay. Rudra okay. asked. Uh, right. In fact, the government of Odisha also has taken many initiatives for promotion of the climate resilient agriculture under mm -hmm. the national initiative for this climate resilient agriculture program. At the same time, actually, when we are talking about the Odisha millet mission or the promotion of the other minor food crops, so that is also a part of the government's mission to prop for the climate resilience. Yeah, so all these things have been initiated from the basic concept that we have to develop the climate resilience and we have found out that when we are promoting the crops like the millets and the minor food grains, so they are really capable of maintaining the yield as well as maintaining the soil health. So these are all efforts by the state government. And at the same time, sir, one more supplement. So when uh, Devasis Pati was mentioning, I forgot to compliment Devasis for the excellent presentation. Uh, when he was mentioning yes, about the contribution of the greenhouse gases, he mentioned that agriculture is contributing around 13.5% to the gas emissions. So at the same time, we should not forget that when he is saying agriculture, that also includes animal husbandry. So the yes. animal husbandry aspect is very, very important. And in the Western countries, more animal production, the contribution to the gases are more due to the animal production than due to the crops. So yes. when we are talking yes. about a very small component of organic and inorganic only in the crop sector, you also should very seriously think about reducing the emissions in the animal production sector. 
So that is very, very important. But at the same time, when we are saying that 13.5% is the contribution of agriculture in the gases, uh, greenhouse gases, so there are many scopes actually, because agriculture is mostly cultivated in the fields and there is ample scope of reducing the external dependence of energy. So that is why we're emphasizing a lot on reducing the gas emissions through agriculture. So that is what I wanted to supplement, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. We'll, we'll, we'll move on to a, another question, burning question that is uh, on, the, on the chat. Uh, Lakshmi Kant Naik has asked, how do we use natural fiber-based products in our daily life and also application of natural fiber in agriculture like cover cultivation uh, or mulching can reduce climate change? Um, I just, uh, yeah, mixed it up, but... So I think Lakshmi, you should rather answer this one also. Instead of asking us. Lakshmi, are you there? Yes, I think he's there. Ah, he's he's there. Because yes, he's sir, not yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm there. Uh, first of all, uh, very good presentation by Pati Bhai. Uh, in his own language, he has played very well as opening batsman. So on my behalf and from everybody, we should uh, congratulate him for a very good presentation. Uh, actually, sir, I wanted to inform that uh, this uh, climate change, uh, all we have heard uh, after presentation, there is also lots of discussion. The natural fiber actually plays a very big role. Both uh, if you see that uh, in cultivation point of view or also by using the natural fiber based products in our daily life, and also using this natural fiber based different mediums for cultivation. Like I've given one example for mulching also, if we shift it from uh, other products to natural fiber based for uh, mulching purpose during cultivation part also, then it will definitely add to the minimizing of the climate change. So this was uh, my message. So, and uh, if you take it as a question, this was a question to Pati Bhai, have you came across this type of data or this type of theories or this type of things that yes, natural fiber based things has really reduced the climate change and it helps it. So this is my submission, sir. Yes, you are right. But uh, I don't have right now with the uh, facts and figures or any research uh, support document in terms of uh, natural fiber as like in the other cases of organic and inorganic discussion we have been doing last couple of years. So but, if not, sir, then uh, it is there. Uh, there are some organizations, particularly under ICR, under the IGS of ICR, who are mm -hmm. working a lot in R&D efforts are there. And uh, I sincerely request you that I can provide these things and it will definitely help you because you are really associated. Practically, mm -hmm. you are associated for its applications and uh, this will really help you that uh, you will, if you get the sufficient data or documents that natural fibers are really helping for this okay, thank you. can i can i add a little bit uh, here yes sir, sure. yes sir okay so with regard to mulching i think the question that was being asked just before uh you know the china case uh using you know this uh, soil mulching method uh, using this uh, biomass fibers etc the china has converted a massive areas of uh, desertified land into cultivable land. It is, is a is a ongoing exercise for last 20, 30 years. If you go to China, you can see, uh, starting from the border of the inner Mongolia, you know, the north side of China, they have uh, gradually, uh, progressively, they are converting, you know, this all this desertified land into cultivable land through the mulching. This is exactly a very nice example of climate resilient exercise mm -hmm. because we are discussing the debate before the organic versus inorganic uh, you know the fertilizers uh, the soil health etc i think uh, uh, if you extensively go for chemical fertilizers agrochemicals uh, in the face of climate change that also has a tremendous impact on the soil health you cannot actually claim that you are practicing resilient agriculture system. Resilient, if we talk about resilience, we need to also think about 
the regenerative capacity of the soil that I was mentioning before means the soil to gain its original condition. So the only way to enhance the resilience against the climate change impacts on the soil, water resource, etc., the organic fertilizers are extremely important. Actually, these are indispensable. These are indispensable. We may argue that in the name of food security, et cetera, we can go for agrochemicals or fertilizer, et cetera. But, uh, but there is always a long-term uh, implications with regard to these agrochemicals. So soil mulching, in summary, is an excellent example of the climate resilient uh, practice. So, so uh, Rudra, you, you raised a very good point. Before I go to Deepak Babu, just quickly speaking, um, uh, we used to have crop rotation before. So uh, to, to replenish the soil health, to, uh, to re uh, replace the lost nitrogen mainly. Oh, and, and this crop with nodular crops, we used to replace it with uh, rich, uh, rich it, rich, enrich it with nitrogen. Yes, right. leguminous crops. Leguminous crops. Leguminous crops. crops. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not but, modular, but leguminous crops. Yes. Um, Thank you. Uh, so, but and that practice, I don't know where it is going, but I agree with Prabhat Babu's um, comment that we need to mix a little bit because the uh, natural development of compost, for example, may not be nitro nitrogen rich. Okay. And in that case, if we supplemented it with a little bit of uh, uh, inorganic uh, nitrogen, you know, then that will initially build the soil health. Okay. Once the soil health is built, you know, soil is uh, a dynamic uh, uh, material. Uh, it, it kind of starts then uh, creating its own nitrogen cycle and other stuff over the period of time. So again, I think uh, Vishwajit has already highlighted that and Kalpana has already highlighted that and Sanjay to some extent has highlighted that. So uh, let's move on to Deepak Babu. Okay. Uh, what is your question, Deepak Babu? Okay. I don't have any question. Uh, thanks, uh, Adabasis, uh, for a nice presentation. I have forgotten to uh, give him a big hand. Uh, but... Um, one thing that we are now going for uh, this solid waste management from urban area as well as <coughs> the, um, agricultural waste management from where we can get a lot of uh, organic uh, compost as well as those waste uh, methane gas, whatever they are coming back, uh, that will be again reused. Uh, those are plants are going on uh, in state of Odisha. And people are also in R&D for such type of activities including uh, Mr. Ma Dr. Mahindra from our CAT. Then uh, government of Odisha, the agriculture department having a quarterly uh, uh, meeting with all the client departments, including ICR institutes, research institute, all the related uh, departments to uh, think about the uh, to resilient cropping system, resilient various uh, environmental activities uh, for uh, uh, this um, climate change activities and accordingly it is the activities are going on and they are pro also monitoring the progress. Uh, for, uh, before I got retirement, I used to attend those meetings and it's a good effort by the government of uh, Odisha Agriculture Department. They, they include OUT, they include all the, uh, uh, that is our director of water management, they include all the ICR Institute including all fishery department, OUAT, and other uh, institutes. And they carry on various activities. And we are, we are also having a very good uh, agricultural policy that is Samrudhi, where some of the activities are there for the agriculture department as the environment, uh, climate change uh, improvement. Uh, further, the, uh, as you told, the actually crop rotation, uh, that is also they are giving stress. Uh, that will also improve, uh, I think, uh, uh, urban waste, agricultural waste, and this uh, crop rotation. That will improve the soil, for which we have to now propagate those things. Uh, that is my suggestion. That's it. Thank you. Actually, the um, uh, not only crop rotation, but intercropping. Ah, right, 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 inter right. Intercropping. Okay, intercropping right. practice. Right. So, uh, right. so 
what i what i was trying and and you raised that good point uh, what i was trying to kind of supplement to rudra's uh, comment was uh, we we need what what nowadays a buzzword has started is climate smart agriculture okay and and <laughs> and uh, we are all smart but uh, you know we we can't uh, i don't know why that term came up but yeah as agricultural engineers we need to work with the you know work in reducing the climate uh, effect or climate change effect but question now comes up is uh, we are talking about soil based agriculture are there other alternatives to soil based agriculture that will come up in the in the future and that that can help us in mitigating the climate change and this is a question to the vasis uh, i know it's a difficult yes. question Uh, is, I have uh, something to speak. I have something to speak. Yes. Hello. Hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Prova speak. Yeah. 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 जे बर्तमान मटी में पकईले भी अर्गानिक से आक्सेप्ट करा कहीं तार गोटे कारण अच्छी तमे मान केमिकल फर्टिलइर कंपेयर कर फार्म एड मानुअल सागर जदि तुम जी नाइट्रोजेन दरकार गोटे क्रप केमिकल फर्टिलइर जब दस के जी हो जाऊँगी फार्म एड मानुअल दरकार से दस शगड़ तेणु दस शगड़ फार्म एड मानुअल तुम कौ आड़े तो तुम पपुलेसन बोभाइन पपुलेसन रिड्यूस कला देश जाक बोभाइन पपुलेसन ओडार भी कमिला देश जाक भी कमिला तेणु फार्म एड मानुअल तुम केवरबन से क्वांटीट तार गोटे कंपेरेट अच्छे कंपेरिजन अच्छी एग्रिकलचर स्टाटिस्टिक्स केजी केमिकाल फर्टिलइर सागर के गाड़ी केगड़ मान फार्म एड मानुअल हेले जा तुम से क्वांटीट रोजन पाइब से अर्गानिक फेरवाटा इमसबुल तुम हंड्रेड परसेंट अर्गानिक गला मैंने तुम प्रोडक्शन एवं प्रोडक्टिविटी कम यू आर टू आक्सेप्ट बोथ बोथ केमिकल एंड बोथ अर्गानिक दिटा को आक्सेप्ट करने को पड़ो तुम कह खाली अर्गानिक करी पूरा प्रडक्शन आउ प्रडक्टिट कम तापर जो बर्तमान ये रुद्र कहला जे व्हाट गवर्नमेंट इज टेकिंग स्टेप्स गवर्नमेंट रेन स्टेप है टू डिस्करेज रईस प्रडक्शन टू डिस्करेज रईस क्या रईस प्रडक्शन टाइम ग्रीन गैस तीन टाक को बढ़ोच गोटे कार्बन डाइअक्साइड बिकज अफ से जो नड़ा को पोड़ से दिल्ली पंजाब ये हरियाणा सैड रे कार्बन डाइअक्साइड बढ़ोच पा रोच धान चाषे दिइंच पा रखा दरकार सब बेले मूल से दिइंच पाटा ही सब बेले पचेकना रखुच जिन गुड़ाक जो नड़ा फड़ा से पड़ी जहाँ फल तुम मिथेन गैस एमिशन अधिका हो हार्ड है कौन ना आम जो स्प्रे कर यूरिया धान गचर तुम चालीस परसेंट मात्र गिसीव कर षाठी परसेंट आकाश को उड़ी जाऊँ दैट इज दि नाइट्रस अक्साइड दैट इज गोईंग टू एयर एंड दैट इज क्रिएटिंग दि ग्रीन गैस सो यही तीनो गैस गोटे मिथेन गोटे नाइट्रस अक्साइड आउ गोटे तुम कार्बन डाइअक्साइड ये तीन टा जा क्रिएटर है धान तेणु धान टा बंद करना तुम क्रप रोटेसन कर धान टाक डिस्करेज कर धान टाक रिड्यूस कर मिलेट ता बदल तुम टेकअप कर गवर्नमेंट स्टेप नौ गवर्नमेंट सब जगार कहूँ कि लोक आक्सेप्ट करने को राजी नुंती जेहेतु से धान सागर में अभ्यस्त हो गले आवे तुम आउ अर्गानिक फेरी पार ना यु आर टू कि बोथ अर्गानिक एंड इनअर्गानिक माइ लास्ट सबमिशन ना 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 प्रभात बाबू आप भूली जाइए हाथी हाथी पाड़ा आरंभ करने हाथी पाड़े हम ओके सॉरी सॉरी ओके ओके इसी मैंने कौन जी प्रभा जहाँ कहला खाली धान चाष कल मिथेन कार्बन डाइअक्साइड एगुड़ा सब सहित तले गोटे हार्ड पैन हो जाए जो सल स्ट्रक्चर आराब कर फर दैट वी हाव टू गो फर एस आर आई एंड भेरियस अदर मेथड्स वेर स्टैंडिंग व्हाट इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एंड मिथेन प्रोडक्शन कैन बी अल्सो रिड्यूस्ड तो एसआरआई रे केबे स्टैंडिंग वाटर दरकार होइनी 
ତେଣୁ ରାଇସ୍ କେନ୍ ବି ଆମେ ନେଇପାରିବା ରାଇସ୍ କୁ ତେଣୁ ଟୋଟାଲ କମ୍ପ୍ଲିଟ ବ୍ୟାନ କରିପାରିବେନି ବଟ ୱେ ଟୁ ଚେଞ୍ଜ ଦ କଲ୍ଟିଭେସନ ପ୍ରାକ୍ଟିସ ଓକେ ଦ୍ୟାଟ 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 ଇଜ ୱାନ ଅଫ ଦ ଆଇଡିଆ ନାଇ ଗଭର୍ଣ୍ଣମେଣ୍ଟ ଏବେ ଗୋଟେ ନୂଆ ଜିନିଷ କରିଛି ଗଭର୍ଣ୍ଣମେଣ୍ଟ ବର୍ତ୍ତମାନ ଲିକ୍ୱିଡ ଲିକ୍ୱିଡ ୟୁରିଆ ଟାକୁ ଆଲାଉ କରିଛି ଇନଷ୍ଟେଡ ଅଫ ଗ୍ରାନୁଲାର ୟୁରିଆ ଅଫ 50 କେଜି ବ୍ୟାଗ ଅର 40 କେଜି ବ୍ୟାଗ ବ୍ୟାଗ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ଇଜ ଏ ଥିଙ୍ଗ ଗଭର୍ଣ୍ଣମେଣ୍ଟ ହାଜ ଇଣ୍ଟ୍ରୋଡ୍ୟୁସ ନାଉ ଓକେ ପ୍ରଭାତ ବାବୁ ପ୍ରଭାତ ବାବୁ ଟିକେ ଟିକେ ଗୋଟେ ୱାନ ସେକେଣ୍ଡ କଳ୍ପନା ବସ ସେଇଂ ସମଥିଙ୍ଗ ସାର କଳ୍ପନା ବସ ସେଇଂ ସାର ୱାଟ ଆକ୍ଚୁଅଲି ଆଇ ୱାଣ୍ଟ ଟୁ ସେ ଇଜ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ୱି ହାଭ କେପ୍ଟ ଆୱାର ଡିସ୍କସନ ଲିମିଟେଡ ମୋଷ୍ଟଲି ଟୁ ଦି ପ୍ରୋଡକ୍ସନ ସାଇଡ ଆଇ ଲାଇକ ଦିସ ଫର୍ଟିଲାଇଜର ଅର୍ଗାନିକ ବାୟୋ ଫର୍ଟିଲାଇଜର ଅଲ ଦିସ ଆଣ୍ଡ ଅଫ କୋର୍ସ ସଞ୍ଜୟ ଆଡେଡ ଦିସ ପ୍ରୋଡକ୍ସନ ଅଫ ମିଲେଟ କ୍ରପସ ଗଭର୍ଣ୍ଣମେଣ୍ଟ ପ୍ରୋଗ୍ରାମ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ୱି ନୋ ଅଦର ଦନ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ଆଇ ଥିଙ୍କ ଦେବାସ ଇଜ ବେସ୍ଡ ଅନ ହିଜ ପ୍ରଫେସନାଲ ଜର୍ଣ୍ଣି he has spent a lot of time there was if you are there yes. have you come yes, have you come across any any entrepreneur or maybe even government program though we know bit of it other than government program any entrepreneur private entrepreneur see for anything have you come across uh, based on uh, uh, that uh, those by products utilization or waste utilization which are actually which has significant contribution towards the dhg as well as the climate not subsidizing to climate change particularly in odisha have you come across any private entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship who are involved mm-hmm. with waste utilization or say by products utilization so that uh, partly uh, which is contributing that's, to that that's the uh, actually ma'am that uh, entrepreneurship ro pura value chain ta actually ebe porjonto bi ame bi nije convinced nu eba overall information is not also existing କାହିଁ ନା ବର୍ତ୍ତମାନ ଯଦି ଦେଖିବେ ଆମେ ଡିଷ୍ଟ୍ରିକ୍ଟ ଲେବୁଲରେ ଇଏ ଅଛି ଏମଆରଏଫ ସାର ଅଛି ମାନେ ଯେଉଁଥିରେ କି ମ୍ୟୁନିସିପାଲିଟିଜ ଆର ଅଣ୍ଡର ଅନ ଚାର୍ଜ ଅଫ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ସେମାନେ ୱେଷ୍ଟ କଲେକ୍ସନ କରିକି ତାକୁ ଡିକମ୍ପୋଜ ମାନେ ଜେନେରାଲ ୱେଷ୍ଟ ଜେନେରାଲ ୱେଷ୍ଟ ୟୁ ଆର ଟକିଂ ଅବାଉଟ ଜେନେରାଲ ୱେଷ୍ଟ ଆଇ ୱାଣ୍ଟ ଟୁ ବି ସ୍ପେସିଫିକ ଅନ ବାଇ ପ୍ରଡକ୍ଟ ଯେମିତି ପାଡି ରାଇସ ପ୍ରୋସେସିଂ ହର୍ସ କେଲ ହର୍ସ କେଲ ହଁ ହଁ ବାନାନାର ଯେଉଁ ସୁଡୋ ଷ୍ଟେମ ଦୋଜ ବାଇ ପ୍ରଡକ୍ଟ ପଲ୍ସ ର ହର୍ସ ଇଜ ଥିଙ୍ଗ approved uh, vegetable ra peel ya upre kichi ko ki hochi i have some information but kaha kaha sangre direct contact re nahi i don't know whether really that is existing or not yes. but i am just taking the opportunity yes, to know yes. it nahi ma'am same thing information mo bakre bhi nahi we are also uh, talking on those things in different forums uh, but jodi ki tha ta to nischoy message asta na but if you have any information uh, any in any manner ଆପଣ ସେୟାର ଯଦି କରିବେ ୱି କ୍ୟାନ୍ ମାନେ ତାଙ୍କ ସହିତ ଆମେ ଆମ ଚ୍ୟାନେଲ ରେ କେନ ଆଇ କେନ ଆଇ କେନ ଆଇ ଆଡ ଟୁ ହ୍ୱାଟ ଡକ୍ଟର କଳ୍ପନା ରାଇଗିରୁ ସେଡ ୟେସ୍ ୟେସ୍ ଓକେ ସୋ ୱିଥ ରିଗାର୍ଡ ଟୁ ଦିସ ବାୟୋମାସ ୟୁଟିଲାଇଜେସନ ୟୁ ନୋ ଦିସ ଅର୍ଗାନିକ ଫ୍ରାକ୍ସନ ଅଫ ଦି ଏଣ୍ଟାୟର ୱେଷ୍ଟ ଷ୍ଟ୍ରିମ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ୟୁ ଆର ଟକିଂ ଅବାଉଟ ଇଫ ୟୁ ଇଫ ୟୁ ହାଭ କଣ୍ଟାକ୍ଟ ୱିଥ ଦି ଡେଭଲପମେଣ୍ଟ ଅଲଟରନେଟିଭସ ଇନ ନ୍ୟୁ ଦିଲ୍ଲୀ ୱିଚ ଇଜ ହେଡେଡ ବାଇ ଅଶୋକ ଖୋସଲା and probably the president is now george varugis they mm-hmm. they have many pro- auto- prototype projects uh, 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 demonstrating the use of the biomass agricultural biomass waste and all, all sort of waste like uh, the horse and all this thing you are telling as a bio as a building construction materials mm-hmm. uh, we were you we are having a we were having a conference uh, on uh, 3r reduce reuse recycle and the circular economy in 2 3 years before in asia pacific and some of the experts were telling that the the significant portion of the agricultural biomass are left unutilized which could generate an economic potential of more than a billion dollar every year you know in asia pacific so one of the area uh, is the the construction of uh, building materials and in japan i heard the body of the bullet train you know the the fiber body they are also utilizing i do not know exactly you know what is that biomass but they are also utilizing a certain fraction of the biomass waste to be utilized for this uh, construction of the body materials of this their bullet trains so there are extensive the value added uses are there and this is an area where actually agricultural engineers can uh, play a predominant role uh, uh, towards the circular economic utilization of the biomass waste stream because they are mostly left utilized you know they are you know fed by animals you know the cattle or they are just spread and left uh, here and there but but without harnessing the true economic potential of the biomass waste 
this is just an example so if you are in contact with the development alternatives uh, please please check you know how they are utilizing the biomass for building construction materials sure sure they must be having some their website no we will no i have see, i actually i have seen their buildings in new delhi i had visited their office and i think probably all of their uh, office buildings are uh, have utilized you know certain amount of biomass as a building construction material at least the walls that will be a good one to see actually we will we will development uh, what you said development alternatives. Uh, alternatives. development alternatives uh, it is close to you know that uh, what is the tower in new delhi kutub minar uh, uh um, there is an area called toglok uh, institutional area or something like that development alternatives okay we will try to see their uh, developments in their website then we will try to contact them if possible actually we are in sorts of that we have been given with some assignments on that ways to wealth so at least uh, our students can be benefited if such type of information i think susama or Sus susama sudhisri is there here susama no, no, is no, no, still left. Still left. Yeah. left. Okay. okay. No, no, very have... rightly. There is a there is a big nexus between the waste management in the agricultural sector. You know, that is what the agricultural engineers should exploit. Uh -huh. I think you were also mentioning about the municipal waste stream. I don't know what fraction of the, the organic uh, plus organic fraction or the, uh, the, the food waste uh, of the municipal waste stream are being, you know, utilized uh, as a composting. 20%, 30%, 50% or the the hundred percent utilization of this organic and food waste that can actually supplement as a composting to our agriculture sector again to make the agriculture system, the soil ecosystem, the climate resilient. Okay, Rudra, I have to stop you now because it's eight thirty in India and it's almost twelve thirty in the morning. Uh, yes, uh, Debu, uh, Debu, I can you hear me? I can hear you, Ashok Babu, but we can discuss. But it it time is up here. I, yeah, yeah, time is up. So, Devasispati. I would come to in the post again, the, uh, as yes. we said, have told right now, uh, this, why the government of India has uh, uh, not encouraging that NPBD program previously was there. We are speaking about so many things. National project on biogas development. Incidentally, I was taught in implement factory. I virtually came into this MSCB world through that uh, NPBD program only. Uh, as a manager in CS. No, that is an interesting thing. I cannot understand why this uh, program has been not taken uh, because uh, as we heard, two, three cattles is enough for one cubic meter of production of gas. And this biofertilizer, I have also experienced the, the people, the farmers used to speak that the good fertilizer without any hazards. And just to add last but not the least, Acharya, there was a in military base in Panagar, they have been 600 cattle. And they were given, I, I, have, I was the pioneer to make them two big biogas plants. They were doing like Benaros. They were having some of their uh, uh, energy needs from that. But not, not the least, there is a tussle between the industry and this uh, climate. The industry, we also encourage a EODB, Rudra may be knowing the government of India and also the world is looking after ease of doing business. And there comes the player. How to check this, all these parameters, the climate against this climate change. Lastly, I will talk to Mr. Pati. This Nai channel and also Kalpana is there. The natural fiber mission was there. Of the government of India's maximum investment was there. That was also, I didn't find nowadays. The national fiber mission, the coconut was also one of them. And Odisha used to give the maximum coconut ropes to all over in India 25 years before before the super cycle hit there. The coconut trees you'll never find there. But you will find uh, not in plenty. That's all because the time is short. However, congratulations, yes. Mr. Prati, to thank focus you. this subject. Thank you. Thank you, Asak Babu. And let me let me thank the buses for a wonderful presentation, the smartest presentation I have seen so far. Yes. Because he spoke for I... 20 minutes and and, and the buses are not there now. Uh, yeah, he's there. He's I there. am he's... here, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He spoke for 20 minutes and let everybody else talk so that yes. you can see it quietly. Yeah, so, yeah. great talk. That's it. Uh, we'll, we'll... Uh, Devo, 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 just, just one second. I, I have an uh, uh, announcement to make. Sir. And it's not connected to this uh, topic today. It is that on uh, 9th of September, uh, uh, some of us uh, alumni along with 
Sanjay and uh, you know the team of his team of faculty are, are organizing a meeting in uh, CAT Radhalal uh, Hall. That uh, meet is about uh, you know building the bridge between the alumni and the students.